Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Gretchen and today I'm going to do another review for a long listed book from the Women's Prize for Nonfiction and today's pick is going to be Some People Need Killing by Patricia Evangelista. Now before I get into the actual book review I do just want to take a minute to say in case you've been wondering where I've been or why I sound like this, I have been sick for the past few days. I have this this uh, wicked sinus ear infection thing going on and I have definitely not been myself these last few days. That being said, I have not been able to put out any content. However, I have been able to still keep up with some reading and I have completed several books within the past week um, that I still need to put out single videos for. And as I start to feel better, I'm going to start to film and hopefully get those out as soon as possible. So thank you for being patient with me. Um, and I am so sorry for the delay, but I just was not up for filming. Um, and I'm sure you guys wouldn't have been up for seeing me in that state either. So thank you for your patience and we should start to see some of those videos come out very soon and my apologies for the delay. Now let's get into the book. So this book follows uh, Patricia Evangelista. She is an investigative reporter and it chronicles the time in uh, the Philippines during Duterte's presidency where she chronicled all of the extrajudicial killings that occurred during his presidency. For those of you that are not aware, the Duterte presidency started in 2016 and lasted through 2022. And prior to him being president, uh, Duterte was a mayor and he was a mayor in the city of Davao. And Davao was a city in the Philippines that uh, was struggling with crime and drugs and was not the most desirable place to live or be in. And during his time as mayor, Duterte was able to make a lot of significant changes and kind of turn that city around and make it a more livable place. So when he was on the presidential ticket for 2016, a lot of voters had known about how he took that city and he was able to turn it around. And they went to the polls with good faith that he was going to be able Able to do the same for the country. The Philippines had a major drug problem and it was starting to get scary and um, unlivable in some areas and they really had hope in him that he would be able to make it a better place to live and save their country. So once he was in the presidency, however, he immediately declared what he called his war on drugs and that basically turned into a six-year reign of terror in that country. And basically what this meant or what his war on drugs meant was that anyone that was um, a suspected drug dealer, a convicted drug dealer or user, um, anybody that was maybe recovering from drugs and was clean, and even a lot of innocents that were just associated with people that were using drugs ended up having their lives taken from them um, by not only people directly within Duterte's government, but Duterte also kind of turned a blind eye to these civilian vigilantes that took it upon themselves to murder a lot of these people that they suspected of uh, being involved with drugs. So this, as you can imagine, living in the Philippines during that time, it must have been absolutely terrifying to have all of these killings happening that were ordered directly by your government and also having citizens taking the law into their own hands and it being okay to do so. So the book really centers around 
her following those killings and her reporting them for the newspaper or magazine, maybe it was a magazine, that she worked for at the time called The Rappler. Now anytime I read a book like this I always am slightly concerned about how political it is going to get. And with this book especially, uh, considering that the primary focus of why these people were being killed was drug reform and a way to rid a country of uh, or fix a country's drug problem. And right there you can really get into the weeds with a lot of political uh, opinions and things like that. And I don't tend to like to read books that have those really hard political agendas. And I will gladly say that this book did not feel that way for me. I don't think that she had a political angle with this book. I think truly her point of this book was just to paint and show all of the atrocities that happened as a result of his war on drugs. It wasn't to convince us as a reader that drug reform is needed or drug reform was not. It was just to really highlight what it was like living in the Philippines at that time and for really bringing out the character of Duterte and showing him for the type of person and tyrant that he really was. So I was happy and, and I was pleased with that. The other part of the book that I really appreciated was that she was able to humanize a lot of the victims. So when we were learning about her and what she was doing with her report, basically there was this kill list and the kill list was reported on a daily basis and it would basically list all of the people that were killed each day in the war on drugs and a Apparently after a while of her reporting this, it went from being, you know, one, one a day to two a day. And then it actually started to get so bad that instead of doing it by the day, they ended up having to chronicle the deaths by the hour. And there was less and less information per victim as the, the war on drugs continued and more and more people were dying. And she was able to take a step back from that and almost snap herself out of being desensitized to all of that and start to rehumanize everything and start to get more of the victim stories out there and uh, try to put the humans back into the story. And I really appreciate that she was able to do that. She was also able to not only talk about the victims and bring more of their story to light, but she also took a lot of time to talk about the people that they left behind. And we were able to learn more about the victims through the people that are still around and with us. But we also learned a lot more about how the deaths of their loved ones has impacted them and how they view the world today. So there was a lot of brutality in this book but there were also a lot of poignant stories as well and for as much as you can like a book about such a brutal of a topic I really did enjoy this. I thought that it was a good book. I think that her her writing was on point. She didn't sugarcoat things. I also appreciated that because obviously um, sometimes with a topic so brutal and a, a topic that can be so polarizing can be very difficult to write about. She was not afraid to put her work out there and she was not afraid to tell not only her story of what she went through during that time 
but also give voice to the victims and their loved ones that are still with us. So I really did appreciate that. My only complaint about this book, aside from obviously the subject matter and how horrific it was, is that there was a pacing issue with this one as well. I've really been struggling with pacing in a lot of these nonfiction books for this prize. This book, I started to read it and the first like 20-25 pages, I was hooked. I was flying through them and I was just gobbling up that story. And then all of the sudden we screeched to a halt and she took a turn where she started talking about the history of the Philippines and also the history of Duterte's rise to his presidency. And although that was interesting, she came out with a bang at the beginning of the book and it really took away when she started to get more into that historical aspect it really did slow the pacing down and it took the book in a different direction. Now we eventually did get back into the point where things started to pick up again and once they did it stayed elevated through the duration of the book but there was just like that period of maybe a hundred pages that I was like oh like this is not what what I thought I was getting after reading the first uh, 20 pages of the book but eventually it did pick up and it got back to that point where I was able to just fly through the rest of the book. So this is another book that I'm going to give a four and a half stars only because of pacing. This long list really does have something for everyone. Uh, we've had memoirs, we've had more historical based books. This was a really good piece of investigative journal and yeah I, I'm really impressed with the level and type of books that that we have and they are all for the most part even books that I'm not a hundred percent interested in they've all been done really well so I still have a few books to get through for the long list but I'm still hopeful like we're still we're still doing pretty good so more to come I um, have also finished a couple more already that I'm ready to do reviews for and then there's just a handful of books that I still actually need to read read. I am gonna uh, just be honest and say I'm having trouble getting a couple of the books and I'm not sure when I'll be able to get to them. I definitely won't have them by the time the shortlist is announced but I will do everything I can to get them and have them reviewed by the time at least the winner is announced. So wish me luck and until we read again Bye.